Okay, can you solve this basic math problem? Well, actually, I suspect that most of you can answer this question correctly. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at it. It is 18% of a day is how many seconds? And uh, feel free to use a calculator to answer this question and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the right answer in just one second. But uh, kind of the big picture of this video it's not just to get the right answer, okay? Because there's different approaches here. Really what I, what I want to emphasize is a very critical part of mathematics and uh, science, okay? And most of you are not going to take this approach, but it's something that you absolutely need to be great at. Now, I'm going to kind of uh, hold off on telling you exactly what that is because some of you might actually take that approach to uh, solve this problem. But uh, anyways, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the answer. 18% of a day is how many seconds? Again, feel free to use that calculator. Let's go to take a look at the right solution. And here you go, 15,552 seconds. All right, so again, I think most of you were able to get this answer, but we must celebrate uh, nevertheless. So I'm gonna give you a nice little happy face and A plus, A 100%, and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that you are still a rock star when it comes to solving basic math problems. They'll be like, wow, I always knew you were good in math, but you could just tell them, yes, uh, but I've been watching this guy on YouTube. He really helps me out as well. All right, now for those of you that didn't get this as the correct answer, no problem, you'll see exactly how to do this. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and get going into the solution. Now, there are different approaches to answer this question. One is really no better than uh, another. But uh, let's talk about some of the ways that some of you may have uh, kind of thought about this question, right? So 18% of a day is how many seconds? Some of you might say, all right, a day. I know there's 24 hours in a day. So if I take 18% of those 24 hours, I can then convert those hours to seconds, all right? Nothing wrong with that approach. Uh, but a lot of you probably took this approach. They're like, all right, 18% of a day, if I can figure out how many seconds are in one day, and then uh, take 18% of that number, then I will have uh, the correct answer, okay? And before you start doing any math problem, you kind of want to think about the different approaches available to you and, you know, try to uh, take the one that makes the most sense to you, right? Okay, so what we need to do here, I'm going to, matter of fact, I'm going to take this approach, is I'm going to figure out how many seconds are in one day, and then we'll find 18% of that number. So the question now becomes, how many seconds are in one day? I got to answer this question before I can answer kind of the overarching uh, question. So how do we answer such a question? Well, most of you are going to get your calculator and be like, all right, I got this, Mr. YouTube Math Man. And in your brain, you're going to be thinking, all right, there's 60 seconds in one minute. There's 60 minutes in one hour. And then uh, there's 24 hours in one day. You're going to type a bunch of buttons on your calculator and you're going to come up with likely the correct answer. Nothing wrong there, okay? Again, I'm kind of using this easy problem to really kind of stress a bigger topic in, ma in math and in science. It's something you need to know. Uh, and definitely you need to um, yeah, understand what I'm going to be talking about to solve more complicated problems. So what am I talking about? Well, to answer this question, we need to consider some conversions, right? Some conversion factors. So we need to understand these conversions. Well, one day, for example, is 24 hours. Okay, we most, you know, all of us should know that. One hour is 60 minutes, no problem there. And one minute is 60 seconds. All right, uh, no problem with these conversions. Most of you understand this. Here is the deal though. I don't want you to think of these conversions in this way, okay? I want you to think of these as fractions, as fractions. So what am I talking about? Well, let me go ahead and show you, right? So one day, uh, two 24 hours, one hour uh, to 60 minutes, one minute to 60 seconds. Okay, so we want to write these as fractions. 
And these things here are called conversion factors, okay? So one hour, two, 24, I'm sorry, one day, two, 24 hours. Now I could write that this way, or I could write it this way, 24 hours to one day, okay? Or I can have one hour uh, to 60 minutes, or 60 minutes to one hour, okay? Or one minute uh, to 60 seconds, um, or 60 seconds to one minute. Now, how do like how do I know which one to use? So should I use this or should I should I use this? Well, there's good reason to use one or the other. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a second. But the main idea here is that you un, you have to understand when when it comes to converting units of measure, you want to express these things as fractions. All right, so one day to 24 hours uh, to 24 hours. So for example, you know this in your brain, so I want you to think of it this way. All right, one day to 24 hours one day to 24 hours, okay? Now you have yourself a conversion factor. Now, what do we do with these conversion factors? Well, this we use these conversion factors to convert from one unit to another, okay? So let's go back to this question again. How many seconds are you in one day? So I'm trying to go from a day to seconds, right? So I'm going from days to seconds. So how do I do this conversion? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do this right now. Okay, so the way you're going to approach this is you're gonna multiply these uh, conversion factors to, until you get the result that you want. So what does that mean, okay? Well, what I wanna do is end up with a conversion that is days and seconds. In other words, I wanna know in one day, how many seconds are there, okay? So I wanna end up with a conversion factor or a fraction that is just a day on top and seconds down in, in uh, the denominator or seconds and days, right? So how can I get a fraction where I just have days and seconds? Well, you can just use these various conversion factors. So check this out, uh, and this is gonna answer that question on which one we, sh uh, we can use. Now remember, when we're multiplying fractions, we multiply all the denominators and all the numerators. But right here, one day uh, to 24 hours, you see I have hours here and I have an hour here. Well, remember, when you're multiplying uh, fractions, you can cross cancel like factors. So this is an hour and this is hours. Doesn't make a difference, hour and hour. I can cross cancel this hour with that hour, okay? Here I have a minute. I could take this minute and I could cross cancel with this minute. All right, now why would I uh, want to do that? Well, because this is going to end up with what I want. And what that is, is the following. I'm in, I left with seconds and days, okay? All my hours and all my minutes are gone, okay? Now, it's really critical that you pick the right conversion factor. For example, I have one hour uh, to 60 minutes. What if I wrote 60 minutes uh, to one hour? Now, there's nothing wrong with this. However, it's not going to help me out in terms of multiplying that conversion factor because I won't be able to cross cancel the hours because now I have hour, hours in the denominator and hours in the denominator. I'm going to end up with hours uh, squared. Okay, So you have to think uh, to yourself, all right, which one am I going to use in order for the units of measure that I want to kind of get rid of to cross cancel? Okay, So again, we're kind of really reinforcing a skill that comes up over and over again uh, in mathematics and algebra, uh, definitely in all sorts of science courses like um, physics, chemistry. doesn't make a difference. You need to understand how to really convert from one unit to another. And if you're understanding what I'm talking about right now, then indeed you will be a certified professional expert in converting units of measure. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually do this now, right? So we got rid of the hours, okay? We got rid of the minutes. So now I have days uh, in the numerator and seconds in uh, the denominator. So now I'm down to one day over 24 times one over 60 times one over 60 seconds, right? I got rid of all these uh, units of measure. So when I multiply across, I got one day times one times one. And let's go ahead and see the answer here, right? So that's gonna be one day in the numerator then 24 times 60 times 60 seconds, that's gonna be uh, 86,400 seconds. Okay, so now we have that conversion, right? Remember the question was, how many seconds are in one day? Well, one day has uh, 86,400 seconds. Now, a lot of you are saying, 
come on there, old Mr. YouTube Math Man. You're taking like the long route. You know, I don't need to do all this uh, stuff. Just give me my calculator. I can do this one, two, three. Now, again, you know, I'm not saying that you, you uh, couldn't get the right answer. Matter of fact, I probably would not even do all this myself. I'm just using this nice basic math problem to kind of really emphasize the importance of uh, knowing how to convert units of measure, which are absolutely critical. And most students struggle uh, with this stuff and it gives them a tough time in science as well. Okay, so that's kind of the bigger picture. Now let's go ahead and take this information and answer the rest of the question. All right, so remember we wanted to figure out how many seconds are in one day. Now we know that one day is equal to 86,400 seconds. So all we need to do is find 18% of this number. All right, so that is our next step. Let's go ahead and take that. But actually, before we take that step, I want you to take the step of subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification button. Uh, this really does help me big time, okay? It helps my uh, channel grow. And the objective of my channel is to reach as many people as possible that are uh, interested in math or need assistance in mathematics, okay? Unfortunately, uh, most math is taught in a very or overly technical manner. What I try to do is to really try to get people to relax about math and teach it in a clear and understandable way. So by you subscribing, it really does help that algorithm out. So thank you so much. Matter of fact, my facial expression right now looks something like that. Okay, back to the problem. Okay, so 18% of a day is how many seconds? This is the original problem. And remember, we took the uh, approach. We're gonna like, all right, we have a day. How many seconds are in a day? Well, we just figured that out, right? So we now know that one day is uh, 86,400 seconds. So all we need to do is find 18% of that. All right, now, how do you find the percent of a number? Hopefully you're up to speed on your percent, but if you forgot, I will explain it. So what we need to do to find the percent of a number is go from that go from a percentage to a decimal. We have to convert the percent to a decimal. And how do we do that? Well, technically what you're gonna do is divide by 100. Now, a lot of you are saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, just move the decimal point over two places to the left. Yes, indeed, you would be correct. Let's take a look at that 18.0%. Uh, when I uh, divide by 100 though, the decimal point moves two places to the left. So the result of dividing by 100 is moving the decimal point over two places to the left. Okay, so to go from a percent to a decimal, yes, you move it over, but we need to understand why we are dividing by 100. Okay, so 18% is 0.18. Now uh, to find the 18% of 86,400, we have our percent as a decimal we get our lovely calculator out and we uh, multiply 0.18 times 86,400 and we end up with the lovely answer of 15,552 seconds, right? Because we already have our answer in seconds. Okay, so again, you know, uh, the bigger objective here was to kind of review conversion factors, okay? Uh, now, for those of you that just got this right, you're like, boy, you know, this was like, you know, too much information. Well, I apologize for, you know, teaching you what I think you should know <laughs> in math, right? Some of you might already know about conversion factors and that's great. But the things I do on my channel, what I emphasize come from long years of experience and kind of the good old fashioned school of hard knocks, right? I've made all the mistakes and I've been in the math game for decades upon decades upon decades. And I could just tell you right now, you know, math builds upon itself and uh, the language of science is mathematics, okay? And there's nothing more important than being successful in math and in science in terms of, uh, you know, different type of word problems that involve units of measure. You have to know how to convert from one unit to another. Now, if you need more assistance in uh, these type of problems, uh, I got a couple different recommendations for you. One, uh, you might want to check out like my uh, Math Foundations course, Pre-Algebra or Algebra 1 course. Uh, you'll find the links to those in the description of this video. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that are similar uh, to this as well, or similar to this type of uh, problem that you can practice. But uh, with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.